Welcome back to the HomeKit Life. I'm Josh, got my cameraman Braden with me, and today we are talking about the Apple TV 4K second generation. Let's get it unboxed. So now that we have that thing unboxed, uh, we'll go upstairs, we'll get it plugged in. Let's do that real quick. All right, so now that we've got it plugged in, that was super simple, right? We already had a 4K Apple TV up there. So we just unplugged everything and then we plugged the new one back into the same cords. We didn't even rerun anything. Good to go. We started watching TV on it immediately. Yeah, so let's go in here. I wanna talk a little bit about why you might want to get one of these new Apple TV 4K second gens. Let's open the home app. And one of the interesting things is if you go in here to home settings, you can go to hubs and bridges and we can see, we actually disabled the home pods for this video, uh, unplug them. There's no way for you to say you don't want a home pod to become the uh, connected home hub. So you want to set up a home hub because they're the central brain of your entire smart home. So if you want to like leave your house and still be able to control your devices, you need a home hub. It's basically the gateway between the Apple network when you're out in the world all the way back to your house. So that's one reason you want it. Another reason you want a home hub is because you want to be able to run automations. So that's a big thing too. When you create an automation on your phone, it actually gets sent to your home hub devices and it runs from there. So to me, that's one of the great benefits of having you know, the A12 chip in this new Apple TV is the fact that hopefully these automations are gonna be faster, they're gonna be more reliable. You've got a thread chip in there so it can actually execute and communicate directly with the entire thread network. And we'd like to uh, hardwire that in, right? Like I want my main home hub to be hardwired in so it's got the, the lowest amount of latency and hopefully the highest amount of bandwidth, right? So if you wanna stream like a HomeKit secure video, ideally it's gonna be going through that, you know, gigabit ethernet. So we have, we run into a switch behind our TV area and then we have a cable that runs all the way back down into our server closet here in this office. So some of the reasons you want to have a home hub set up for sure, and I think this second gen 4K Apple TV is well suited for that as a home hub. All right, so the other thing that we did that I wanted to talk about was the, we installed an Eve Energy because you get a little bit of additional info when you go into the Eve app and hit Thread Network. As far as I know, this is the only way to see this kind of info. Uh, so we installed the Eve Energy here as an overhead light. We'll have a video for that coming out in a couple weeks. We'll link that up. You can see we're getting all these routers here. And if we just let it run for a minute, it actually tries to figure out like what's going on, like all the different devices. We should see one of these switch to become an Apple. Yeah, there it is. Apple thread router the border router. So if we click on that, we can kind of see, it says it's a uh, 0x1c00. They haven't like put nice names on these. It'd be nice to know like, oh, that's my Apple TV. Oh, that's my HomePod mini. But we don't have that yet. My guess is, you know, the Eve team is still exploring like how to identify devices. And then we'll either get an app update or a firmware update, most likely an app update that will change the name of this Apple thread router for you, but we can also click in here and see, you know, it's got, it's downstairs and we're like kind of far away, but it's saying it's got a quality in, excellent quality out, good. Uh, so the connection seems fairly good. Yeah, I don't know. As far as the thread goes, this is one of the things we were super interested in. Definitely feel like it is a solid device. And then if we go in here, we can say, Oh, living room, left lamp, no response. 
Oh, that's the left lamp. We want the basement. Well, let's see, office podcast. Yeah, we're getting like instantaneous response here to our downstairs stuff, even though like it's way over there. We're turning the basement. Whoops, that's the main lights. We don't wanna do that one. People are out there. <laughs> um, but you can see things are responding right away. And I've always found that if the tile changes, the device has updated and we're getting like almost instantaneous response. So uh, to me, you know, as, as far as like a home kit device goes, very happy with that, that second gen 4K Apple TV. Man, that's getting me every time. Like just, I wanna say fourth gen instead of second gen. I will say this, the other thing that is interesting to me is, you know, I, I don't know that it's worth upgrading. If you already have a HomePod mini, maybe you don't need this. Um, we have a lot of Apple TVs here and we were lacking one for this office. We had stolen it for another TV. So we just went ahead and upgraded and then moved that, that home theater Apple TV down a year. And so now it's in the home theater where it's like hardwired and available. It's working great again as the, the home kit hub, but you know, with that A12 chip and they went ahead and put HDMI 2.1 in here, let's geek out a little bit for a minute about TV stuff, right? So with the 2.1, you get the 48 gigabits per second bandwidth on that thing which means that we're not only gonna be able to do the 4K at 120 frames a second, my understanding is this thing should be able to do 10K at 120 frames a second. So they didn't say this is an 8K Apple TV or a 10K Apple TV, but this is a very capable device with the HDMI chipset that's in it and with that A12 Bionic, I think we're gonna see a firmware update for this thing in the future where we get an 8K, maybe even 120 frames per second or 120 Hertz with your TV update. And like, it'll be great if you have such a TV. Like we don't have that kind of TV. Those things are kind of expensive still, but I could see this like being a very future-proof device. So, uh, that's another reason if you're in the market, I think it's probably worth picking up. And then the other thing is, you know, that new remote, I will say I have mixed feelings on the remote. It's definitely like heftier. I like the feel in my hand. They did move some buttons around. I have found like my muscle memory is just off. Maybe it just takes some getting used to, but we have so many other Apple TVs in the house that I, they all have old remotes, so I'm not sure, like, it's like my mind's just gonna have to engage and like, no, hey, these, these buttons are in a different place and it's gonna make me look down at the remote. Um, it did fix, the remote has a, a special power button on it now, um, and we were having trouble with the CEC, which is like communication to other HDMI devices to power on and power off. The first gen 4K TV, was not working correctly for some reason. I don't know if it was like a firmware update or an, a tvOS update or like what happened. We had everything working good, but then it just like stopped working a month ago. We put in the new Apple TV second gen 4K and like everything started working again. And so it's kind of nice having that dedicated power button on the remote. I definitely like that. I like the feel of it in my hand. My only complaint is why didn't you put some kind of like U1 compatible chip in there? Seems like an obvious win. Seems like everyone was predicting that. It didn't happen. That was a bit of a disappointment. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I'm super happy with it. We've been living with it for over a week now and it's been, you know, rock solid TV device. We haven't had any problems. Some people have been reporting like 4K, like some things are showing up as like HD versus 4K. Everything seems great for us. So I think if you're, if you're really into HomeKit, I would recommend at least picking one of these up and uh, disabling any other Apple TVs you have as your HomeKit hubs. Um, here's a little clip of what that looks like. For me, my final thoughts here, definitely worth the money. 
I would upgrade, you know, depending on if you have a TV that doesn't have an Apple TV on it, I would highly recommend at least picking one up or pick one up and sell your old Apple TV if you only have one TV. But it's it's definitely worth the price to me. I think this is an A plus device from Apple. I don't know, we're big fanboys. So take that with a grain of salt. And as always, you know, we don't get paid to give our review here. We don't get free products to do our reviews. We just kind of pay for everything ourselves. So we always try to give you our honest thoughts on this stuff. Uh, but if you do find that you like our review and you're gonna pick one up, be sure to use the link below in the description and uh, no extra cost to you. We get an affiliate commission and you help support this channel. So anyway, that's what we have this week. Uh, I guess I never actually said a grade, did I? I think this is an A plus product, A plus. So hit that sub button, hit that like button, and you know we'll be back next week, probably talking about Abode, and then we'll be talking about the Eve Energy. So we have a lot of great stuff lined up as we're building this smart home, we're bringing you along on our journey every week. So be sure to come back and watch more videos. See you next time.